Hi, everybody. My name is Rafa Lombardino, and this is Translation Confessional. On Fluency and Speaking Naturally Last week, I wrapped up my How I Learned series, so now you know all about my working languages. English, Spanish, and Italian, besides Portuguese, my native language. Today, I wanted to drill down into the differences between working languages and fluency. Throughout the years, many people have told me to stop saying that I don't speak Spanish and Italian. After all, I translate from both, so it's obvious that I speak them at some level. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to understand the material I translate, transcribe, or subtitle. I wouldn't be able to read books originally written in those languages. I wouldn't be able to watch entire movies or series from Spanish-speaking countries or from Italy without the assistance of subtitles. And I wouldn't be able to communicate professionally with clients who reach out to me in those languages. So why do I always say that I don't speak those languages? Well, it's a personal choice, really. I can be conversant in both Spanish and Italian while making it clear that I'm trying my best to communicate my thoughts in those languages, despite my frustration to find the precise words I want to say, because I don't actually think or have an internal monologue in Spanish or Italian. I wish. Learning Spanish in Brazil, I had to do a couple of presentations entirely in Spanish for a couple of tasks. Let's say that while I aced my written tests, I would always get too nervous to get an A when doing those presentations. The words would simply escape me because I couldn't and still can't think in Spanish. It's not a matter of pronunciation or anything. I can sing entire songs in Spanish because I've memorized the words, but I'm unable to express myself naturally in the language. It would take a lot of training, which I lacked back then, and unfortunately, can do now. So my mind goes blank when I have to create original content in my working languages. That's what happens when I'm in a group of Spanish-speaking friends. I understand what they're saying, but when I want to make a comment or contribute to the conversation, English comes out. I always ask them to keep speaking Spanish, but they end up switching to English just to be polite and include me, even though I would rather just rest my chin on my hands and make googly eyes at them while taking in all their Spanish. But that's exactly what happens here around the house. I only speak Portuguese to my kids. Sometimes they reply to me in Portuguese. Most often they speak a mix of the two structuring the sentence in English, but adding Portuguese words here and there just to please me, because they wouldn't do that in school, for example. And they only call me by saying, Mamãe, vem cá, or I wouldn't answer. But I recognize that it must be odd for some people to have a conversation in two languages like that. Some people would rather stick to one or the other for the entire conversation. But it's something that has been working here at home and a way to make sure my kids have constant contact with their second language. To better explain how my brain works, and maybe it goes hand in hand with the fact that I'm certain I am not equipped to act as an interpreter, every time I read, watch, or hear something in Spanish or Italian, my brain immediately goes into Portuguese or English. For example, if I hear the news on a Mexican radio station while I'm driving around town, I can understand the story, but if I had to relay the message to someone, I almost definitely do it in English or Portuguese. I wouldn't be able to repeat the entire thing in Spanish unless I had written it down and could read it aloud. Here's another example. The other day, I was watching Untraditional, an autofiction series starring Italian author and actor Fabio Volo. There were a couple of funny scenes in the episodes I watched recently. There were no visual cues, just two people having a conversation, which means I understood the entire dialogue without the subtitles, right? I started laughing hysterically, so my son got curious, ran into the living room, and wanted to know what was going on. I'm laughing, he's looking at the TV, and he doesn't get what's so funny about it. 
since he doesn't understand Italian and nothing actually funny is happening on the screen. So I had to explain it to him using my own words in Portuguese. Later on, I told my husband about the same scenes, but in English. Could I repeat the entire dialogue in Italian? No, unless I had the script in my hand. So why do I say that the way my brain works is an indication that I could not be an interpreter? One could argue that interpretation is exactly that, right? You hear the message in one language and you relay it in another. Well, I agree. But what I've witnessed while watching my interpreter friends in action is something done at another level, really. I'm well aware of the shadowing technique. If you're not in the translation interpretation field and are unfamiliar with the term, it consists of listening to something, let's say news on TV or the radio, and repeating the exact same words along with the speaker with a fraction of a second delay. I had to do some of that during my introduction class at UCSD Extension, where I went from a professional certificate in English and Spanish translation. I would always get nervous, miss a bunch of words during the activity, and my mind would go blank. That's just how my brain works, and I cannot function like that. I just don't have the amazing brain interpreters have. So while I can consume the information after receiving the full message, having had a chance to organize my thoughts in order to relay it correctly in my main languages, Portuguese and English, I just cannot have audio going while speaking at the same time. I can hear information and type something else at the same time. I'm actually doing it right now while my husband is watching the news in the living room and I can hear it all the way here from the office as I take notes for this episode. That's why I'm able to transcribe or subtitle audiovisual material. Could I turn on the mic and either repeat what's being said or interpret it at the same time? Nope. My brain and my mouth are not connected that way. My brain only works with my eyes and fingers, and I'm totally fine with that. And as I said all the way back in episode 7, being a translator is about knowing your limitations and being true to yourself, remember? As I'm reflecting on today's topic of discussion, I remember one of my teachers at UCSD Extension who had us all introduce ourselves the very first day of class. When students said that they didn't really know whether English or Spanish was their main language, because they grew up speaking both, our instructor would ask them, what language do you speak when you're drunk? What language comes out when you stub your toe? Well, that's your main language. (laughs) I can confidently say that either English or Portuguese came out in those situations, depending on whom I'm talking to. I've had a few drinks with good friends and told jokes in either language while sitting back and having a good time. I've cursed at the TV while watching soccer in both Portuguese and English, much to the entertainment of my husband, kids, and close friends. Or to the horror of my parents, who always kept a clean language around the house. Now, there were two instances in my life when I was very effective speaking Spanish and Italian. And that's why my husband makes fun of this little quirk of mine, because he witnessed both events. I'll tell you exactly what happened on those two occasions right after this. Are you ready to take the next step in your translation or interpreting career? Perhaps you're just getting started and would like to find out how to get more business from direct clients and agencies. Or maybe you're an experienced professional looking to diversify into an area such as voiceover or audiovisual translation, or even specialize by brushing up on your medical terminology. Whatever your needs, pros.com training has you covered. We offer interactive courses that will take you from A to B. In other words, taking a course will help you to acquire a new skill, one that is designed to enable you to get more work or to achieve more success. We also offer email support and group coaching sessions to help you along the way. One thing's for sure, it's not a journey you need to take on your own. The question is, are you ready to invest in yourself? Take action and start learning today. Your future self will thank you for it. Visit training.pros.com to get started. The one time I was very effective speaking Spanish, I was hugely pregnant with my daughter and watching the Olympics on TV. My husband came home with his childhood friend so we could all watch the competition. 
He calls me and says that he can't park the car in our apartment complex because there was a guy parked in our spot. The guy was speaking Spanish to my husband and his friend, both monolingual English speakers. So my husband needed me to come to the rescue. Because I'm a stickler for rules and I'm infuriated by people who do not observe parking regulations, I put on my shoes and wobbled all the way to the parking spot to tell the guy off. Now, I cannot remember the exact words I said in Spanish. I just remember the message. How dare you? Who do you think you are taking our parking space? What if I needed to go to the hospital? I pointed at my huge belly. I already called the towing company, and now you're going to have to pay a fine to get your car back because they're towing this crap out of here. I pointed at the big tow-away sign right next to his car. I'm sure I did some swearing in Spanish, too. The guy miraculously started speaking English and apologizing. So he thought he could get away with no hablo inglés when the two Americans asked him to move his car. But when a crazy pregnant lady started ranting at him to move his car, and she did so in Spanish, he dropped the act and complied right away. So I was pretty effective on that occasion for sure. When it comes to Italian, I mentioned last week that we met my husband's long-lost cousins in Sicily. While many of our relatives spoke English, I had to sometime act as <clears throat> an interpreter from English to English when my husband would say something. What happened was that he would just speak the way he does, unaware of how much slang he's throwing around. So sometimes I had to repeat what he said in plain English, kind of tapping into the skills I acquired when I was teaching English as a second language back in Brazil. I would adjust the sentence structure a bit or use a synonym for the slang, and the message would be a lot clearer for our relatives to understand. Now, one of our cousin's husband, Nicola, does not speak English, but he was very patient with my limited abilities to speak Italian and help me with my pronunciation too. I told him this entire story about how we saw an older couple of tourists getting mugged in Naples. This young, small-framed dude walked past us and quickly snatched the purse of a woman walking in front of us. Too bad we didn't have any time to react, because my husband and I could have jumped the guy and got the purse back. But he already had his buddy sitting on a Vespa in an adjacent alleyway, and they both sped off. So I told all that to Nicola, and when his wife came back in the room, he turned to her and conveyed the entire story in proper Italian to her. And I could confirm that the communication had indeed worked. Because that wasn't a professional setting, but a warm, welcoming environment, and we were all just so excited to learn about each other, I was able to relax and use all the Italian I could muster to express myself. But I still can't think in Italian. Once again, I cannot remember the words I used for the life of me. <laughs> So, having said all that, when I'm alone with my thoughts, they are in Portuguese or English. Sometimes I challenge myself to think about how to say the same thing in the other language and check if I can access the same vocabulary in both. I don't do that in my source languages, though. I can try to have a mental flashcard and ask myself, how do you say this in Spanish? What do you call that in Italian? But I don't have the internal monologue in my two source languages. And that's perfectly fine. I wouldn't be able to write notes for my podcast episodes in Spanish or Italian and present the same material accurately in a way that you, who are listening to me right now, could actually enjoy it. If I had to translate these notes, I would definitely hire the very competent Spanish and Italian translators I've been working with for about 15 years now. Because I know my limitations, and I highly value my colleagues' abilities. Send me an email at rlombardino at wordawareness.com or leave a voice message on my anchor page. If I get enough feedback and voice messages, I can go back to the subject and post a special podcast episode with everyone's opinion on this very same theme. By the way, my anchor page is anchor.fm slash translation dash confessional. I look forward to hearing from you. 
Stay tuned for weekly episodes and subscribe to Translation Confessional through your favorite podcast app.